Hey folks, it's Ray at DCRamRecord.com here, and today I've got a quick tip on new sleep widgets, or new sleep views if you want to call them that, on the Garmin Fenix 6. Uh, now this is a beta feature they've just announced, it's a public beta feature, which means you can go ahead and you can download it, give it a whirl, find out if it works or doesn't work, give them feedback, all that kind of jazz, but I figured I'd show you what it looks like today, because eventually it will show up on your wrist even if you don't go and download the beta. And you'll also see on the other watches as well, which we'll get to in just a moment. Now I've already loaded the beta, I'll put in the description the link to the beta site where you can grab the files and try it yourself. I won't walk through that. The steps are pretty straightforward and if you're not comfortable with them, you'll probably want to skip it until it just shows up on your wrist automatically as part of a normal update cycle. Okay, so on the watch face itself, you won't see any major changes. Instead, you're going to go and press down through the widget glances down until you find sleep. And this is a new widget glance that has been added there. Uh, if it's not showing up in your widget role once you update the firmware, then simply go to the very bottom, click edit there, and then add the sleep widget in. So right from the very beginning, you see my sleep time last night, five hours and 18 minutes of awesome sleep. Uh, then I've got a 70 there, that's my sleep score for the night. And then this colored graph there is showing my sleep phases or stages for the night. So things like awake, REM, deep, etc. cetera. Uh, now what you see right there on this next screen, once I tap into this to open up the larger widget view, is the same sleep score of 70, my sleep quality rated at fair. And then along the bottom there, there's that same kind of timeline. Let me just turn the backlight back on there for you. Uh, the same timeline of the different phases. We'll get into that in just a second. And then a bit of a short descriptive there of my sleep. So it says short but restorative sleep. Kind of like an elevator pitch, if you will, of your sleep for last night. Uh, going down one notch there, or one level into that widget, you can see that entire timeline of the night again, showing me falling asleep at 1.41 a.m., waking up at 7.05 a.m. Both of those are accurate. And then it shows my awake, light, REM, and deep sleep over the course of the night. Uh, now, of course, I don't have any way to validate uh, REM versus light or deep sleep, uh, but the wake time is correct. It was only just a couple minutes there uh, that you can see. Pressing down again, you go into essentially the same data just displayed in different ways. So you can see kind of like this uh, chart around the outside, this pie graph, if you will, around the outside. Uh, you'll see your different times right there, the duration in total. And then press down one last time and a little bit longer elevator pitch than before saying I slept less than recommended but still recovered well. Oh hey, and a quick note, if you're finding this video interesting or useful or something, just simply whack that like button in the corner right now. It really helps out this video and the channel quite a bit. Okay, so that's just a quick look at things, but what's happening behind the scenes is far more interesting. Uh, so. Up until this point, for the last nearly decade of Garmin's wearable sleep history, uh, they've been doing all their sleep processing online, so in their Garmin Connect web platform. So you take your watch data, you wear it, it syncs to your phone or Wi-Fi, wherever it syncs, gets up to the platform, and then you see the sleep data online there or in the mobile app, uh, all using Garmin's own calculations online. But with this, they're actually using FirstBeat for that. So FirstBeat's a company that does lots of licensing of different physio-type modules. Uh, so for example, if you have VO2 max on a Garmin watch, that's coming from FirstBeat. If you have trending load, that's coming from FirstBeat. On the Phoenix 6 alone, there are 18 different modules that are licensed by FirstBeat prior to the sleep thing. And then the sleep thing, I believe they're licensing three modules uh, from FirstBeat for this. Garmin did confirm they are licensing from FirstBeat. Uh, so from a consumer standpoint, at first you're like, yeah, it's cool new data. But behind the scenes is sort of interesting. And why might that matter? Well, there could be a case where you're gonna see different data because there are different calculations or different algorithms. Uh, and now in my case, so far in the last four days of testing this, they've been basically a wash. It's the same rough data I've seen before. Accuracy is the same, no major changes there. But as you expand into tens of millions of customers, even 1% of those people being different might be noticeable to some folks. Of course, not all those devices are getting this update. Uh, right now, the plan is that the Phoenix 6 and Mark series will get this update probably near termish uh, once the beta cycle has finished and once they're happy with the results of that. And then by the end of the year, Garmin says the 945 will also get it, uh, an update. And they also said that some sort of future devices may get the update as well. So that makes sense, of course, uh, depending on what comes down the line. Now that said, I think there's a pretty strong case to be made that the Garmin Venue and the Vivo Active 4 should probably get the same update as well. Also probably the Garmin 4Runner 245. And the reason for that is if you look at the competitive landscape, uh, Polar really started doing a lot more of the deep sleep metric type stuff on their watches. They did that last year uh, with the Polar Ignite series watch, and now we see that expand to other Polar watches as well. Uh, and that's priced at $199. So if you kind of set that as a floor there, then I think it makes sense for some of the other Garmin watches to get that same widget on there as well. Uh, of course, keeping in mind that when Garmin adds that widget to these watches, that costs them money because they're licensing that from first speed. Now, whether that's costing them a couple pennies or even a dollar, we don't really know. Given the fact that there's 
already 18 modules on this watch. Uh, and typically speaking, the more modules on there, the less that you pay for additional modules. Anyways, if you want to give us a world, go ahead and find that download link down there and, and give it a shot. As usual, if you do have a race, uh, nobody has a race right now, but if you did have a race coming up, uh, then obviously don't update your watch to beta hardware or beta software, sorry. Uh, but otherwise, give it a whirl and see how it works and uh, drop a comment down below. If you found this interesting and useful, go ahead and whack that like button there or hit the subscribe button. There is plenty more sports technology stuff coming, some stuff coming tomorrow, in fact, uh, next week. And we got, there's actually a lot of stuff coming. Companies are waking up, it's exciting, and you won't want to miss it. Have a good one. Mm -hmm.